In this video, I will show you how to create high quality cycles renders in minutes. Hi guys, Ryu here with another tutorial for Blender. This time we're going to talk about something different than add-ons, we're going to talk about optimizing cycles. I will show you today how you can drop cycles renders from above an hour to literally minutes. I had a chat recently with a friend of mine and his name is Rafael Daniel Zuban. You can go to his website and check out his work. It's quite impressive. He was working on stuff like Blade Runner, Mars, etc. And his job is to optimize rendering. And, you know, he's, he's into 3D scanning and VFX and quality control and pipelining, all this stuff. So, you know, he knows what he's doing. And he spent like maybe 40 minutes with me, which is amazing. And that was the most illuminating 40 minutes in my life. I mean, I spent all night rendering stuff just for fun because I couldn't believe how quick that was. So let's talk about the scene. Four and a half million polys. This is all geometry in the back. Okay, these are buildings. Now, in addition, I have some uh, emissions going on in the back. This is volumetrics. So there's a box with volumetrics. If I go to my settings here, you can see there is a volumetrics principal volume setup on this box. My world is being lit by 16K HDRI. It's a very dim light. It's sort of like a bluish overcast day. So it's not really bright. The render resolution is 4K. I'm recording it to a 16-bit TIFF, uncompressed. So it's like pumped to the max. And let me show you the final result. So this is actually, um, this is a 4K raw render from Cycles. And if I go to 100% view, you can see that it's extremely clean. I don't know if you can pick it up in, in YouTube, but even if I zoom into a, to a shadow area, it's just, there's no, there's no noise. And you can also notice that in addition to all that, I actually have a depth of field running on my camera. And, and the f-stop is at 2.0, which is quite shallow. That's a very wide uh, aperture. This is a final render after post-processing in the Photoshop. And again, it's extremely clean. And the reason for it is because I worked on a 16-bit TIFF, which carries a lot of information with it, a lot of tonal, tonal information, color information, etc. You can actually see these images, well, at least the, the final one, on my art station in 4K. So you link down in the description. So just click on it and have a look for yourself. Now, the first thing that um, Raphael told me is that I should keep my samples as low as possible because that's what's pumping up the time of the renders but we all know that not enough samples gonna cause really noisy images sort of you know distorted right kind of dirty he said start with 100 it's like come on man i mean that's impossible he said just trust me start with 100 and i did and actually it wasn't too bad i think for a brighter image will be perfect now i like quality so I actually rendered this image that you see here, 200 samples, okay. Here I had four, uh, instead of four, I had six bounces. Diffuse I had at four. Glossy I think at four as well, and the rest was the same. Now you could start lower at four, and for example here at even two. Now these two are questionable. If you don't have any glass or like uh, decals, transparent decals, like for example, this one, I'll show you. So if I go here, you see that decal here with the text. Now, if you have this value below three, the transparent background of the decal will show as a, as a gray, kind of like a gray noise, black noise. So this can't be too low. If this number is too low, um, this decal will stop being transparent. So if you have decals running on, you might want to go a bit higher. It's actually the same problems with other decals. So for example, like this is a decal as well. Hold this plane around would be grainy. So 
this numbers needs to be need to be around four to um, to render decals properly. But if you don't have decals or glass, you could drop it to maybe two, and this one to zero. Right? Volume. If you don't have volumetrics, you could go zero. Now I did have volumetrics, so I set it to two. You could actually set it higher as well. My settings were six, four, 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 and two. Now, caustics here, you could actually get rid of them or just keep them, it's up to you. Then let's talk about the most important thing, which is compositing. Now, this is the node setup that you should have for compositing. But if you open Fresh Blender, like this one, this is 2.9 actually, which doesn't have the important settings on the right hand side, but we're gonna get to this in a minute. Now, if you open your compositing window, you're gonna see something like this, basically blank, okay? You need to turn on this, use nodes. You're gonna have two nodes. These nodes are exactly the same as these ones, okay? But you'll notice that this node on the left has slightly different settings, and I'll tell you why in a second. Then you need to add the noise from the filter. So Shift A and you add the noise. Then Shift A and you add glare. Now glare is what's responsible for the bloom effect, right? This lovely bloom it's like from Eevee and by default it's set to streaks but it doesn't really work well I mean streaks will create those kind of like a star like star like effect on lights so you could get this similar result when you're photographing something at night and you set your aperture to a really um, narrow value so high value which means narrow aperture is always a high value, so let's say 16 or 11 f-stop, right? Then if you let your shutter run for a longer time, as you do at night, then you're gonna get those lovely streaks of lights, the kind of star effect, right? But this doesn't really work that well, it's kind of, it's it doesn't really look good. So I switched it to fog glow, and that gave me this lovely bloom effect, like from Eevee. You can play with settings if you want, the rest of it stays as is. Now, this part, let me go back to 2.83 because um, 290 doesn't have the settings I need. Now, you need to switch on one thing, and that's essential, okay? If you go to uh, Passes and Data, you need to take on Denoising Data, right? If you don't have this on, you see you can't see these, um, these options here, those nodes. And you need to connect Image to image, um, denoising normal to normal and denoising albedo to albedo and the rest just leave it as is. And that's it. Then when you're rendering, to be honest, the only thing I will be playing with is the number of samples. So if you can go at 100, go 100. I rendered this image in 4K with these settings in 16 minutes. And I will show you a video after this uh, time-lapse that actually shows the whole rendering process. And the 2K image, so 1920 by 180, render it in eight minutes. So if you drop the samples to, let's say 100, you probably could get this result in four minutes. And that's a 16K bit TIFF with 16K HDRI with volumetrics and bloom and without noise in cycles. There is one more thing you need to know and that's performance here. These two numbers, X and Y, define the size of the tile that Blender is looking at while rendering. So the, um, the higher the numbers, the bigger the tile, the faster you're going to get the render delivered. Now, in my case, I'm using CPU and GPU for that. Um, I don't have any, you know, um, special card. It's a, T8, a 1080, 1080 GTX. My CPU is quite decent, but, you know, the computer is about four years, three and a half years old. So it's not the newest technology. So if you're, for example, using 280 Ti, you might be able to go higher than that, and that would definitely speed up the render time. If you can't go that high, you might want to try to 56 or lower. But again, this number will affect directly the speed of your 
rendering. But nothing you can do about it, that's basically a limitation of the hardware. Thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed the vid. Give us a like and subscribe if you did. Many thanks to Rafael for sharing his knowledge and you enjoy your cycle rendering. See you in the next vid. Take care.